Hey guys, today we're testing the RTX 3070 with the Odyssey G9 monitor and we're using iRacing today. We're also gonna throw in some Fortnite to see how this thing performs with shooter games. So stick with me, we'll jump right into the settings of iRacing and then move into Fortnite later on in the video. Okay guys, here are my graphics settings for the RTX 3070 with the Odyssey G9 monitor. I'm running this in triple screen mode as you guys can see. All my measurements are plugged in. Everything is on high detail. Um, any stropic filtering is on 16x. Uh, we don't have a limit set on. We have 2048 car textures and FXAA on. So this is what we're gonna use as our, um, our high performance baseline. We're gonna use the cup car like I mentioned before. We have traffic and we're gonna be starting at the back of the grid. So we're gonna see what the highs and lows are from a performance standpoint with the 3070 with the Odyssey G9 monitor. Now, you guys should know that I'm running firmware 1008.1 on the Odyssey G9. I'm running 457.30 from a NVIDIA control center standpoint. This is in 240 Hertz mode, which is very important for the G9. You run 20, it just doesn't look good. Um, and what else do we have to talk about? My OC, my overclock, for some reason, on my machine went back to stock settings. So now I'm running back up to five gigahertz overclock on my i7-9700K, M2 storage, one terabyte. We should be good to go here. So let's see what this thing does. I'm gonna crank it and see how this 3070 does with this G9 and iRacing. iRacing is very CPU intensive and not as GPU intensive as let's say a set of Corsa or Competizione or even um, Race Room for that matter. So today's video, we're gonna be obviously using this car, but we're gonna do iRacing and then we'll do Fortnite after to see what the performance looks like in a regular like shooter type of game. 80 frames per second on the front straight. We're running a million cars here and they're driving like douches. We're just gonna pass most of these guys. Let's stay right here so we can get a little bit of traffic. And we're at a roughly 100 frames per second and everything on high, which is a good sign that most of the goodies that we added are consuming resources from the GPU and not CPU. So we should be good to go here. 76 frames around this corner. This usually dips down very low and goes right back up very high after. But with the cars and the track, the rebound was only about 30 frames, but here we are sitting at 125. So I'm just gonna shut up for a little bit, keep my eye on what's going on. If anything crazy pops up, I'll say something. But the performance, I'm not seeing anything dramatically different than my 2070. Just to keep it 100 with you guys. Um, the only thing I notice is the texture quality and the coloring looks so much better, but the performance is not blowing my 2070 out of the water. In fact, it's just about the same, but I didn't run the 2070 on high, just for the record. I ran it with a setting that I'm gonna use next and show you guys where I like to keep my graphic settings at. It's a good representation of what just a single practice session or not many cars on a track look like. So let's try to get away from traffic and back up to this leader here. And see what just a single Single car on a track does. That looks so good. I like it. Okay, this is our jacked up setting here. I wanna pull over, restart this race. And crank the settings down, exit all the way out of the sim so it picks up the new changes. Let's just change them here though. Let's keep sky on medium is where I like it. Put objects on low, event. Low, grand saints, low, crowds off. I don't care about people standing in the crowds. I don't usually run 2048 textures. And I think that's basically it. So let's get that setting kicked in. We're gonna quit the race, come back, and then we'll see what it looks like with the new graphic settings. All right, we're in the back of the grid again. This is with my settings. As you can see, there's nobody on the left. It looks kind of boring around here. I don't really care about that stuff anyway. I just want to get the best performance out of my simulator. So here we go. Full grid, 86 frames per second on the front straight. Just kind of stay back here. So diving in.
Okay, what do we got? 75, 70, dipping down to 60 over here. Running a lot of cars. That was aggressive. Let's go around the outside. Cars don't look as sharp as they did before because I turned down 2048, but they look very good. Didn't really run that option before. Here's a good representation of the light reflecting off of this car right here. I love this corner. It really shows it off really good. But we seem to be significantly and consistently over 100 in most places on this racetrack. So for these little turns here to kind of go down, but. And as we get away from this traffic, we free up some more resources for rendering the cars in front of us. So looks pretty good. Here's a good look at that surface. It looks like. Oh, okay, I got you. I see you, player. It's good a long way. It's all. Okay. Just one car in front of us rendering. And let's see what this lap looks like with just one car, and then we'll shut it down. Okay. A little higher back here. Obviously, we're not running as many cars. I think if you had this screen or a single 2K or 1440p screen, however you want to call it, I think you'd be happy with the performance of this graphics card with iRacing. I don't think you'd really need much more. Anything you get more is going to come from your CPU, not your GPU. At least for now, until they optimize their graphics. But I like it. It's so smooth. What this 60 frame capture will pick up is how buttery 120 looks and 100 and even 75 looks really good. Okay, so here we go. Free laugh, no traffic. Just us. We only got a little, little two or three cars in our mirror. Again, surface texture looks fantastic. Especially in this last turn coming up here. It looks like real life. So let's park it. And I think my verdict is if you don't have triples and anything other than triples, this graphics card is going to be very good for you. You're going to like what you get. I like it. I think um, everything I'm looking for in a graphics card is basically here. I would like some more frames, but I think that's my CPU. Like I mentioned before, I'm running a 9700K. So let's look at the outside shot, because everyone likes an outside shot. That's one of the best parts about iRacing is the replay. And we're still chugging along. I think the replay settings are a little bit lower than than my normal settings, but it looks very good. Sometimes I get choppy replays. This is very smooth. Very good. Cool. All right. In a nutshell, like I mentioned before, this is iRacing, so you're not going to get the massive increase on graphics performance just by getting a GPU. What you will get is a massive performance increase on getting one of those new sexy AMD chips that are out that have really good single core processing power, but my i7 is basically doing the same performance as it was with the 2070, but the textures and resolution just look a little bit better. So really happy about the graphics performance with the RTX 3070 and the Odyssey G9 here in iRacing. Um, I think if you have triple monitors, you need to hold out for a 3080 and get a better CPU, but for my case, it works perfectly, so I'm very happy with this. What I'm going to do next is go right into the Fortnite video because I've been playing Fortnite lately and the graphics texture in Fortnite is incredible. So we're gonna move over to Fortnite. If you guys are here for sim racing only, this is the part where you shut the video off. If you're here for just performance stuff, um, this is gonna be a quick look at Fortnite. Well, I have to move myself, but I have everything on Epic. So 
quality is on Epic 3D resolutions at 66%. I don't know why it does that. I think that's because of DLSS. Shadows Epic, anti-aliasing Epic, textures Epic, effects Epic, post-processing Epic. Uh, V-Sync is off, motion blur is off. I'm running uh, FPS on, DirectX version 11, multi-threaded rendering on, and I have DLSS set to quality. So DLSS is really cool. It's machine learning um, super sampling, which basically modifies your um, your anti-aliasing on the go. So it kind of re reacts to the performance of the PC or the GPU and then makes your graphics kind of in line with that. So floating down while rendering the entire world, we're hovering right around 100 frames per second. That seems to be the average that I see mostly throughout Fortnite. But let's go into this little German town and then see what we can see if we can put some load on this thing. A lot of people like to land here. So I don't see anybody else to fight. Uh, maybe we'll jump in the water, see what that looks like. Oh, there's a bot. Let's get away from this guy. Water reflection quality looks okay. Sometimes it gets materialized when you zoom out pretty far, but when you're close to it, it looks like water. Let's go back up to the city. Oh, I got murdered. That quickly. Right, here we go. Venom has um really shiny skin, so it highlights that reflection quality when you're in game. What I just want to do is show like what the texture quality looks like, specifically with Venom, because he seems to be a high, like a really high definition build. Everything's liquid smooth, roughly roughly 100 frames per second in here with all these characters loading. Not too bad. We're gonna drop into this Coliseum area. I know there's gonna be a fight, but I just wanna drop in and see what the, the textures of the Coliseum look like. Um, no need for G-Sync here. Like I mentioned before, I'm running NVIDIA firmware 457.30 um, with the Odyssey G9 1008.1 firmware. And it seems to be chugging along. I have no complaints. Really happy with all my graphics settings for, for Fortnite. Um, everything looks really good. So look at, his, look at his skin texture, if you guys can see that. It looks exceptionally good. And I did try this game with the 2070 and it wasn't quite as, um, I won't say realistic, but I won't say, I will say as detailed. It wasn't as detailed as the 2070 or is more detailed than the 2070 was. So let's go get into a fight. See what some shots look like. What's that? Something's in there. Yeah. Let's go hide and reload. This guy's not good. Okay. I always like looking at flames in um in video games. They look pretty good there too. Down here seems to be low detail. Let's get out of here. It's not as sharp and thought through, I think, as the rest. Okay, let's go get into a fight and then close this video out. But this is Fortnite with the Odyssey G9. Um running in 240 hertz mode. G-Sync is off. Everything looks spectacular. The colors are really deep. Fire looks incredible. The motion's great. Um, frames are hovering around 100 to 115 frames per second, sometimes spiking up to 120. And um, that's what this game looks like. Let's go out into the sand and jump into one of those balls. Who cares? This is another feature that looks pretty good on this monitor. You kind of sink in. And then the dust trail that gets left behind you is really sharp and accurate here's some vehicles yeah so there you go basically 110 to 120 frames per second here in uh, Fortnite with Odyssey G9 I enjoy it I think the extra real estate is almost like cheating in some cases because you can see so much real estate on the map it does render in 21.9 mode versus 32.9 so keep that in mind you're not getting a crisp um, field of view when you move obviously to certain directions the left side gets magnified because it can only just do that so that's what it looks like guys um, Fortnite looks extremely good with the Odyssey G9 and the 3070 from MSI um, you won't have many problems with it. I think if you have this combination and you play shooter games, you'll be very satisfied. The real problem is they don't make shooter games, too many shooter games in 32.9.
aspect ratio, so we're always going to have this magnification on the left and right, but you get used to it after a while, and it doesn't really bother you because you focus primarily on the middle of the screen, but in general, it's um, it would be nice if we could have realistic aspect ratio. So, thank you guys for watching. That was iRacing and Fortnite, all in one video. Um, this monitor, in my opinion, is starting to grow on me. I do want to go back to triples at some point, but I'm going to hang on to this until there's triples without bezels. Um, this performance of the graphics card is also pretty good. I will probably upgrade to a 3080 Ti once they come out, um, just because I have high requirements of uh, some of my simulators with graphics performance. But outside of that, it's damn good, man. You guys are going to like it. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching.